In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this highlighter effect seen in the Vox YouTube videos. Hey guys, it's Ross from Flatback Effects. Now we haven't done a Vox style video in a while, and this video came requested on how to do this highlighter effect. Now if you're new to this series, I'll put a link in the description below, which will take you to the other videos we've done in this series. So let's jump over to After Effects and get started. So over in After Effects, I've downloaded this image of the book that I want to use, or the page of what we're actually going to be using. Now I want to create a really authentic looking highlighter effect over some of this text. So what we do is I grab my piece of paper here, I'm just gonna right click and create a new comp from selection. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to right click and create a new solid. Now this is going to be the color of your highlight. So if you wanna use a different color apart from yellow, you can just go ahead and select a color here, but I'm going to use this standard sort of yellow color and then hit okay. And the other thing we want to do is come up to effect, down to generate, and we want to add a stroke effect. Now I'm just gonna turn this layer off just so we can see what we're doing here. And now we actually want to go through and draw a mask of exactly where we want to highlight this text. Now it's a really simple effect, but I find by doing it this way, it actually looks a lot more authentic and I'm gonna show you why. So what we actually do is we just grab our pen tool and I'm just gonna pick a part on the text that I actually want to highlight. So I just want to say highlight this section here. And what I actually do is I'm just gonna click randomly along here and I wanna try and make this as randomized as possible. Now, just before we move on, I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one. So if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing. And if you haven't already, you can also sign up to my email newsletter that I send out each week. And that has useful tips and tricks as well as the latest products and packs that I've been making. Now, if you think about actually highlighting something on a piece of paper, you're never going to get that exact sort of straight edge line. You want something that's not sort of perfect. The more slightly imperfect it looks, the better. Now, just so we can see what we're doing, I'm just going to turn this back on and I want to come up here to my stroke settings and I want to make sure this is selected as mask one. And the other thing I want to do is just come down here and say on transparent. Then what I'm going to do is actually just scale up my brush size here and I want to select that color that we'd selected before, which is the yellow. Now at the moment, the yellow actually sits over the top of our text and we want to basically sit behind our text. And the other thing we want to do is we don't want to lose the detail in this paper. You can see as I zoom in here, we've got a lot of sort of detail of the actual texture on that paper and we want to keep that. Now the only way we can do this is actually by changing the mode. So we come down to our yellow color and you can change your modes by selecting this button here. And I'm going to change this to be multiply. Now as soon as you do that, you can see that it actually retains that sort of grain on the, even the rips in the paper here and the imperfection on that paper and it makes it look a lot more realistic. Other thing you can do is also if you select that stroke, you can also adjust the highlight effect so it better highlights the part that you want to keep. And the other thing is you can also adjust the brush hardness. Now all that's going to do is just make a sharper edge, but I actually find that just by dragging this down slightly, so you don't want it to be perfect again, we're going for that slight imperfection. I'm just going to drag this down to around sort of 85. I think that just gives a nice little soft edge there and it looks really good. And the other thing we want to do is obviously it's just static at the moment and you could leave it as it is, but we do want that to actually animate in. So what we actually do is we actually just create an end keyframe here. And I'm going to drag this all the way back to zero. And I'm going to go across on my timeline, maybe about a second also in here and I'm just going to drag this up. So I'm just going to create an out point here just so I can see what I'm working with. And once I play through, you can see that we've actually got our animation playing through. Now at the moment, the speed is okay, but I can adjust that speed by dragging those keyframes in and out. And the other thing I want to do is I also want to highlight the second line. So what I can actually do is select my layer and I'm going to grab my pen tool again and start by drawing a second mask that sort of runs through here like this. And then if I come up to my stroke settings, I want to hit this all mask and also make sure stroke sequentially is actually selected. And what this does is you can see here is once that first one's actually finished, it's going to start again. 
Now, if you turned that off, Baseset's going to highlight all of those masks at the same time and the same rate, keep in mind. So I want to basically select that because it just looks a little bit better. So you could go through and highlight certain words depending on the look that you're going for. You could also go through here and just change that highlighter color depending on the look that you're going for as well. And also if you wanted to adjust the size of your actual stroke. Okay, so now we've got that. What we actually want to do is actually select that layer, duplicate it, and we're going to select another part just further up on our document that we're going to highlight. Now, what we're going to do is actually just take that layer and duplicate it. Now, I could just select both of those masks there and actually just move them up and select this part here, but I don't want to select all of this. So what I'm actually going to do is just go through and delete a few of these keyframes here and then just readjust this. So we've actually got this part selected and then I want that second part there. Now, the other thing is I want that to actually animate or start later. So what we're actually going to do is just offset this layer. So first we get that bottom one animating in and then we start animating in this top layer. So if we play through this, you can now see that we've got this effect. So now we've pretty much highlighted the parts we want. We just wanna create an interesting sort of camera movement over the top. So it's sort of like moving across a page like they do in the Vox YouTube video. So what we're going to do is actually come back to our project and what we're going to do is just right click and create a new composition. Now I'm just going to use 1920 by 1080 here. I'm gonna call this one main comp and set my frame rate to be 30 frames a second and then hit okay. Then I can drag that composition that we just created into this one. And then what I'm going to do is actually right click and create a new camera. And I just want to set this one to be 35 millimeters and then I can hit okay. And the other thing we need to do is actually make this a 3D layer so we can interact with our camera. So I'm just gonna turn on the 3D layer here. And then what I want to do is actually just rotate this down. Then I'm hitting C on the keyboard and I can actually reposition my camera here. So I'm using the different controls that we've got just to reposition my camera here. So we've got something that looks a bit more like this as a starting position. Now, if I just start to move through here, you can see that we've actually got uh, animation playing out of the highlighted part that we've got. And I want my camera to sort of move over the top of it, but also I want the focus to be set. So everything's sort of blurry on the outsides, but we've got a nice thin sort of focus on that middle text. So what I can actually do is come down here to my camera options and I want to turn on the depth of field. Now at the moment, nothing actually happens. So what I want to do is actually turn up my aperture. And as I do that, you can see that we actually start to blur more of the outside. And then I can drag this in, which is where we actually want to keep the focus. And again, I can just mess around by dragging this down here to get more or less focus. So I just want to increase that focus range a little bit there. I'm also going to drag this up. And then what I want to do is actually create a keyframe for my focus distance. And I'm also going to create a keyframe for our camera's position because I want the camera to move. So we need to create a starting position. So I'm going to create a point of interest and a position. Then I'm going to move across to where my animation sort of finishes, which is somewhere probably around here. Just gonna hit N on the keyboard and zoom in very slightly here so we can see what we're actually doing. Then I can navigate to my camera's position here by hitting C to get the different camera tools. Otherwise, what you can do is just come up here and use the camera tools by clicking and then actually selecting the tool you want. And I'm just going to create a little bit of movement here. And then I also want to adjust the focus distance so that it stays focused on that second line of text there. So then I'm just going to adjust this endpoint here. And if I play through this now, you can see that we pretty much have the finished effect. So you can see that it looks like we're actually highlighting something on the piece of paper and we're getting all that nice texture come through from the paper that we're actually using. And with that nice sort of camera movement over the top, it just makes it look a lot more realistic and interesting. So there you go. That's how you create this highlighter effect scene in the Vox YouTube videos. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.